the uh, theory of secularization, which has been promoted in Western intellectual quarters for several decades, this theory predicts that as the world becomes more developed, more technological, more educated, more sophisticated, it will become more secular, less religious. Peter Berger, the sociologist, puts it pretty well and with a note of irony. He goes, he says that the most confident exponents of secularization believe that, quote, eventually Iranian mullahs, Pentecostal preachers, Tibetan lamas will all think and act like professors of literature at American universities. Now, this thesis was uh, advanced so confidently that kind of most people sort of accepted it. In other words, secular people thought, wow, things are going our way. And religious people thought, wow, things are going their way. But as it turns out, this is uh, not true. And what we have seen is a, uh, well, some people call it a backlash against secularization. But of course, this raises the question, what causes this backlash? Is it the case that secularization is not meeting some very basic human needs? Um, and this notion that secularism would replace needs that were previously met by religion is turning out not to be the case. Now, secularization is uh, fairly far advanced in Europe. Um, Vaclav Havel, the uh, former uh, president of um, the Czech Republic, said that Europe is, quote, the first atheist civilization in the history of mankind. Now, I don't think he meant by this that Europe is full of atheists. In fact, when there are surveys, you find out that the number of atheists in most European countries hovers around five, maybe eight percent. And uh, so the atheists are outnumbered by the religious people, but the largest group kind of falls in the middle. You could call them sort of nominal Christians or Christians who don't really uh, follow Christian beliefs or teachings. And so we come back to the concept I introduced earlier, which is the concept of practical atheism. In Europe, there's some uh, variety. Countries like Poland, for example, are far more religious, um, Ireland as well, than countries like France or, or Germany. The sociologists Pippa Norris and Ron Engelhardt say that the world as a whole now has more people with traditional religious views than ever before, and they constitute a growing proportion of the world's population. So the West is becoming more secular, the world is becoming more uh, religious. And what this really means is that a lot of developing non-Western cultures are resisting secularism. They, um, one of the phrases that you sometimes hear is uh, modernization without Westernization. And what that means is that these cultures want uh, technology, they want prosperity, they want development, but they identify the West with this, with secularism and also, by the way, with progressivism and liberalism. Some people think that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and as it turns out, this is not true. Islam is the second fastest growing religion in the world. The fastest is Christianity. But it's not simply a matter of who's growing the fastest. It's also a matter of how uh, they are growing. Islam grows mainly through multiplication. In other words, is Islam grows through reproduction. Muslims, by and large, have more larger families than non-Muslims, and so the Islamic population grows that way. Christianity is growing mainly through conversion, people who are not Christian uh, coming into the Christian fold. So that's an important difference. And uh, the other point is that Christianity has now truly become a universal religion. Let's remember that Christianity has baked into it uh, a kind of universalism. Think of Israel, ancient Israel and, and ancient Judaism. Ancient Judaism was for the Jews. They, it was a kind of tribal religion. But from the beginning, it's very clear that Christ talks about coming for all mankind. And so, in a sense, you could say that what Jesus did was he universalized the propositions of the Old Testament. Well, even though Jesus did that, Christianity was not, in fact, a global religion. It started out, of course, in the so-called, what we now call the Middle East. It spread through Europe. It was carried by the Roman legions on the back of the Roman Empire. So it spread really, but it became a European faith. 
for many, many centuries. Uh, and then starting in the Counter-Reformation, 16th, 17th centuries, um, you began to see missionaries go to Asia, to Japan, to uh, so that the faith became more far-flung. It began to, to find its way into other parts of the world, but it still wasn't anchored there. You couldn't realistically say that there was a kind of powerful Christianity in places like Japan or China or India, let alone Africa or later South America. But today, that is the case. Today, you find that there are uh, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions uh, of Christians in places like China and India. And so uh, you can truly speak of Christianity now as being universal. And that is that is not true of any other religion. Other religions are by and large regional. I'm not saying you can't find any um, followers uh, around the world. But what I'm saying is that they are usually anchored in one place and then they've got limited or, or kind of thinned out followers elsewhere. Think, for example, about Buddhism. It was founded in India. Now, there's actually not a whole lot of Buddhism left in India, but there is Buddhism in Southeast Asia. And there are a few Buddhists as a kind of, you'll find a few guys in France and a few guys in America. I'm a Buddhist. But by and large, Buddhism is not universal. Islam as well. Islam is very strong in certain parts of the world, strong in the Middle East, strong in Turkey, strong in Indonesia. And there are, of course, Islamic populations in Europe and America. But, but Islam is not a universal religion in the same sense uh, that uh, that Christianity is. And so what we're seeing is this kind of great global shift. And um, the historian Philip Jenkins calls it sort of the browning of Christianity. In other words, Christianity is becoming not only more universal, but it's becoming sort of darker skinned. And I'll pick this up uh, in the next segment. <music> 